Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about rotational kinetic energy. So this is the fourth kind of energy that we talk about in this class. The first three kinds are UG, gravitational potential energy, US, spring potential energy, K, which we normally call kinetic energy, but now I'm gonna call it KT, and the T stands for translational, as in this is translational kinetic energy, and then the last kind of energy we have is KR, which stands for rotational kinetic energy. And this is going to fit in with all of our conservation of energy equations. So first, let me give you the equation for rotational kinetic energy. The equation is KR is equal to one half I omega squared. I is the moment of inertia. Sometimes they give you the moment of inertia. Other times you have to solve for it. And then omega is the angular speed, and you're going to square that. It looks very similar to translational kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared. And that's because the variables basically match up. I is similar to mass, and omega is similar to velocity. Both of these things have the same units. They have the units joules. And just to be very clear, you have rotational kinetic energy, kr, whenever an object is rotating. And you have KT, translational kinetic energy, whenever an object is moving. And when I say moving, I mean up, down, left, or right. And so potentially, you can see problems where the object is both rotating and moving. And in those cases, you're going to have to add these two energies together. And we'll do an example of that later in this video. But first, I have a fun one. I want you to calculate the rotational kinetic energy of the Earth. I'm going to help you out. First, I'm going to give you the mass of the Earth. That's going to be 6 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. I'll give you the radius of the Earth, which is 6.4 times 10 to the 6th meters. We consider the Earth to be a perfect sphere, even though technically it's not. It's close enough to this equation. And the moment of inertia for a sphere is 2 fifths mr squared, which we can get from a table if you're given one. One last thing I'm going to tell you as a hint. The Earth makes one full rotation every 24 hours. And this is everything you need to solve for KR. So first, let's remember the equation for KR, which we literally just said a second ago, one half I omega squared. If we want to find I, it's pretty simple. I gave you the mass and I gave you the radius and I gave you the equation. So we can easily plug that in. I equals two fifths times the mass, 6 times 10 to the 24th, times the radius squared, so that's 6.4 times 10 to the 6th, and that's squared. If I plug this in a calculator, this is going to give me a massive number of 9.83 times 10 to the 37th power. Don't worry about the units right now. This is just the moment of inertia. Now, if I want to find omega, the angular velocity, this is less obvious. There's no strict equation for it. But I will tell you this, if you wanna find omega, in this case, since it is moving at constant speed, you can say it's equal to change in theta, change in the angle over time. Now, change in the angle is not very obvious, but in order for the Earth to make one full revolution, that is two pi radians. One revolution is two pi radians, we need to know that. And then for the time, this is where you basically have to convert 24 hours and convert that to seconds in a day. Now to do that, there's a few different methods. Here's the way I like to do it. I start with 24 hours, multiply by one hour in the denominator and 60 minutes in the numerator because that cancels out hours for the units. Then if I wanna convert from minutes to seconds, it's one minute in the denominator and 60 seconds in the numerator. Again, minutes cancels. And so this is the correct conversion factor. I just got to do 24 times 60 times 60. And that will give us 86,400 seconds. And that's what goes in the denominator here. So it looks like omega is equal to 2 pi divided by 86,400. If you plug this in a calculator, you'll get 7.27 times 10 to the minus fifth. And so now all we got to do is plug into the final equation. KR is equal to one half I omega squared. 
I we said was 9.83 times 10 to the 37th power, ridiculously big number, and then times 7.27 times 10 to the minus fifth, and that is going to be squared. So plugging this in a calculator, this will give me my final answer, and we'll get about 2.6 times 10 to the 29th power, and the units are joules. That's how much energy it just takes for the Earth to spin. We're not even counting the amount of energy it takes to move around the sun, but regardless, this is a ginormous number. So that's it for the first example. We've got one more to look at today. This one is gonna be harder. So for the second one, let's say I have a hoop rolling down a ramp like this. When we did these problems earlier in the year, it was like a box and it was sliding down the ramp with no friction, but now it's going to be rolling down the ramp. It uses something called rolling friction, which has an equation, but we never use the equation in this class. We're gonna be using conservation of energy to solve this. And I'm gonna say this object is a hoop with a radius equal to capital R, a mass equal to capital M, the height of this ramp is capital H, and the angle of this ramp is theta. And my question is, I want you to find the velocity of this hoop at the bottom of the ramp in terms of our variables r, m, h, and any other constants such as g, the acceleration of gravity. And I'll give you one more equation. I for a hoop, the moment of inertia for a hoop is just m r squared. So now, how are we gonna solve this? So first, we are going to be using conservation of energy. That means I'm picking two points, point one at the top, point two at the bottom, and I gotta figure out what kind of energy is at each point. At point one, should have mentioned this, we are at rest, we are not moving, which means that energy total at point one is all gravitational potential energy, that equation is MGH. Or I guess, technically in this case, it's capital M and capital H, because that's the variables I used, and G is still lowercase, and we're not gonna plug in 9.8 for that, because we want it in terms of variables. Then for E total two, we're asking ourselves what kind of energy is at the bottom, Obviously, there's no potential energy anymore because we're at the bottom. And equally true, we're going to have kinetic energy because we're moving. But the thing you need to know is that we're going to have both translational kinetic energy, KT, plus rotational kinetic energy, KR. The reason why? We're both moving and rotating. This is what I was referring to earlier. So that means it's going to be 1 half mv squared plus 1 half i times omega squared. And since we're saying energy is conserved, then I'm saying E total one equals E total two. So capital MGH is equal to one half MV squared plus one half I omega squared. The problem now is we have too many unknown variables and I wanna solve for V, which means I gotta find I and omega. So if I wanna find I, the good news is it's kind of already given for us. I for a hoop is equal to just MR squared and all of these are variables that were given in the problem. Mass was M, radius was capital R. We're good there. Now for omega, this you probably don't know, but I'll tell you, this uses a different equation than we used for the last problem. In this case, we wanna say omega is equal to velocity divided by the radius. The reason why we're writing this is because we want to get us back to velocity, normal V, because that's what we're solving for. And if you don't know this equation, maybe it's because you're more familiar with this version, which is the same exact equation, just moving the R to the other side. So as long as you know one of these two, you're gonna be fine. And I'm gonna be plugging this omega in right there, and that I in right there. In other words, left side does not change, still MGH. Right side, still 1 half MV squared, but now plus, it's gonna be 1 half I, which is m r squared times omega squared which is v over r quantity squared now i gotta solve i gotta reduce as much as i can first thing i'm gonna do is when i square this i gotta square both the numerator and the denominator so it's really v squared over r squared and then times m r squared times one half and if i want to reduce this i would say that the r squareds cancel right here very nice leaving me with one half m v squared for this portion of the equation and then just write the rest of it so plus one half m v squared and on the left m g h 
Hopefully you're not lost right now. If you do have questions, please post them in the comments. But now again, I gotta solve for V. So because these are like terms, I can add them together. 1 half mv squared plus 1 half mv squared just makes a total of 1 mv squared, so just mv squared like that. On the left, I still have mgh. You can say mass cancels, so gh is equal to v squared. And finally, take the square root. Velocity is equal to root gh. And there's our answer for the velocity. Now you may be wondering, is this speed slower or faster than if we just had the hoop sliding down with no friction? If it was just sliding down, I'll tell you the velocity would have been root 2gh. And I would prove that the exact same way using conservation of energy, just nothing rotating, so no kr. And so in other words, since this is root gh and this is root 2gh, when the hoop is rolling down the hill, it is going to be slower than if it was just sliding down with no friction at all. And so that is everything I have to say about rotational kinetic energy, at least for today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.